working on trimming up one of my boxwood hedges. It's looking pretty wooly and it needs some major help. Um, I also wanted to give you my thoughts on this DeWalt battery operated hedge trimmer. So I think it's been about a year ago, but we put together a video where I used this and then I told you I'd tell you my thoughts on it and I never did. Just got this DeWalt trimmer. So expect a comprehensive review when we're done. So I thought I would take the opportunity today to share my thoughts with you. So if you wanna head over to this point in the video, um, you can skip right to my thoughts on it, but I wanna talk about the hedging first. These are winter gem boxwoods. They're a zone uh, five through eight or five through nine, I think. They were here when we moved in. They're kind of in a triangle formation. And this past winter, we had a tremendous amount of snow. And this side of the hedge, which is the most visible side, of course, got really weighed down with snow. I mean, it was almost touching the ground. Um, so they are not as straight up and down as they normally are. So it's gonna be a little bit um, of a tricky business to get them straight up and down again. So I'm not gonna be able to hedge them as tightly as I would like to. So what I'm gonna do is lightly hedge them in today. And then the next time I go into hedge, I'll hedge them a little bit further back than I do today. And I'll just gradually do that until they're straight up and down again. And I hope that each time I hedge, new growth is encouraged on the branches that I expose. What I'm trying to avoid is just cutting off too much so that I expose the inside of the shrub, which is just kind of scrubby branches. It doesn't look very pretty. There's also a couple of spots where I've got some dead that I'm gonna be going in and trying to rogue all of that stuff out so that we don't have any of this yellow dead stuff showing from the outside. So as far as the best times to prune, this could be different depending on your growing zone. So I live in a zone five. We get really hot in the summertime, really cold in the winter. So the best time to prune, there's kind of two sweet spots, either mid to late spring, kind of early summer when it's still cool. The reason why you don't want to do it really early spring is if you're still freezing, when you do it that early and you cut off fresh growth, then you're exposing everything underneath to those cold frost and it can cause some uh, frost damage. Um, and then you want to hit it before it gets too hot in the summertime because again, if you expose fresh growth, then it can uh, scorch from the summer heat. The next time you can prune is either late summer, early fall, whenever it starts to cool off enough to where when you expose that growth again, it won't um, get scorched by the sun, but you want to do it early enough to where it has a few weeks to acclimate before you start getting frost in the fall. But I do want to say that it's always a good idea to go in and ask your local garden center when the best time is to prune, because if you live in a different growing zone than I do, it might be slightly different. I assume it's pretty close to the same, but you know, there's different things about different areas in the country, and I don't know everything about all the growing zones. I know about mine pretty well. So always go into your local garden center, chat with them about it, and they should be able to direct you. So this is a side I'm gonna start on and I don't really have any great tips for you guys on the actual hedging process because I'm not a professional at it and it is an art form I get by I mean I'm not like really great at it but I'm better than when I started I think you can get better practice makes progress um, the only thing I have to say I guess as far as the height level the way I get the height pretty much the same is I find a point on my body where I know that's like the height I want it and I kind of memorize where that feel, like where that spot is on my leg. And then I make sure to keep it on that spot on my leg the whole time. And that way I know I can't get too off. So anyway, I'm just gonna haul into this thing. We'll see how it goes. and I think it looks pretty nice. I didn't have to cut out as much dead as I thought I was gonna have to, which is awesome. But you can see in the front of this section right here that there is a spot that's not quite as glossy green and that's where I can't go in quite as far as I want to because of how they were bent over. But I'm hoping over the course of maybe a couple seasons, I'll be, be able to kind of edge them back a little bit more, um, maybe a couple more inches, but it looks pretty clean and tidy and that's just what I was shooting for. So now I have a ton of stuff to clean up. This is the yuck part. So I'm going to be using um, just my collapsible rake and leaf scoops to pick up the big stuff. And then I'll go through with my blower. This is such a handy tool when you're dealing with gravel, stuff and gravel. You can blow up little stuff into a pile really easily. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, 
now that I've got my hedging done and I found a little piece of shade, I wanted to give you my thoughts on the hedge trimmers. So I have to admit, when we first got this, I was really skeptical. I just didn't think that um, it was gonna have enough power. In fact, Aaron was the one who ended up going and buying it. I've always used the gas-powered hedge trimmers, um, and I just thought that this wasn't gonna compete with the gas-powered. Um, but I have been kind of proven wrong. For what I need around our garden, um, this has been wonderful. I think the number one amazing thing about this hedge trimmer is that it's really lightweight. And that means a whole lot to me when there's so much hedging to do. We have lots and lots of boxwood hedges. Um, we still have a few little privet hedges, some topiaries. And so I'm having to hold this thing for hours to hedge trim. There's no way I could hold a gas power trimmer for that long because they're so heavy. And it's also nice because you don't smell like gas after you're done working outside. There's also electric trimmers, which I'm not a huge fan of because you have to string extension cords out to where you want to work. And I've actually, I think, blown through three extension cords because, you know, I'm back and forth with this thing and I have cut through a few of them. So it's kind of a hazard for me anyway. Um, and they're really not quite as powerful even as this battery powered one. So this has a 22 inch blade that cuts branches up to three quarter inch, which is great for the type of hedging I do. I'm um, hedging a lot of boxwoods, juniper, arborvita, um, privets. The only thing that this one hasn't been able to handle are my really old privets that have become really woody. They have really big stems all over it. Um, it does a really nice job on the outside with the smaller branches just to kind of shear it up and make it look tidy. Um, but if I'm getting into bigger branch type projects, I'll usually choose a different tool like loppers or a chainsaw. The batteries actually last for a really long time. That was another thing that I was kind of questioning when we got it. So today's project took me about two and a half hours to complete and I used two and a half batteries. And the good thing about these batteries is that they don't dwindle. You know how some will just kind of like, they get weaker and weaker. This one goes like full power and then shuts off, which is great. Um, so I would suggest that if you um, were in the market to purchase one of these kinds of hedge trimmers, I would get two batteries. So you can buy them with or without batteries. Um, so buy one with a battery and then buy an extra battery. They usually come in two packs though and they can get kind of ex expensive. So what we did, because we kind of wanted to um, like shift all of our tools to the same line, like have tools that all use the same kind of batteries. So we bought the blower that's in that same series that uses the same battery. So each one of them came with a battery. So it's perfect. We have two batteries. I'm not using the tools simultaneously, so we can swap batteries out as we need to. This blower is amazing too, you guys. So I've been using it in quite a few videos and I haven't really talked about it. I have noticed quite a few comments from you guys asking what brand it is. So it is the DeWalt battery operated blower. I was skeptical about this one too and it actually has quite a bit of power. So ultimately, if you are in the market for a hedge trimmer, I would totally recommend this one. I haven't tried every single hedge trimmer out there, so I'm not comparing this one to everything out on the market, but I've had this one for about a year and a half now, and I really like it. I've had great luck with it. So that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I really hope that maybe it encouraged you guys, those of you who have hedges, to maybe go out and tackle it yourself, because it really is fun and satisfying when you have the right tool to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.